Um, so I did that yesterday. Um, yeah, malfunction. I read chat. I did that yesterday. Um, I went through process with them basically. I watched their game and then uh, talked about it with them afterwards. And they still had some like problems. So I said for them to play more because I wanted. I was streaming at the time. I wanted to play some games and shit. So I told them to play more and send me an STV demo, and I'd review it on stream and let them know like more about what I thought, basically. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, what does the name Cadus come from? When I was about 14, I wanted a name for something, and I just couldn't think of anything. So I just started like tapping keys at random, and it gave me the letters K A I D U S, not in that order, but I just like rearranged them. You know, and that's what I came up with. So I'm gonna watch this demo. Uh, I don't have my demo script anymore. Find. I think the Z still works. C. Find C demo time scale one. Find X demo time scale 0 0.4. Okay, let's go quickly check that I did that right. Fast, slow mo, normal. Okay. So I'm going to be paying particular attention to their setups on mid, because that was really a crucial problem they had yesterday. So you see like the demo, I told him basically to take the pack, and then if he thinks there's a fast rumor to play back. So now they're playing with their scouts on top. Okay, so I'm just going to pause it real quick and look at the setup they have. It's already like a, l a lot better than yesterday, but the thing I notice is these two guys over here, the medic and the demo, are really detached from the rest of the team. Like Radar just got a pick, so it actually is probably going to work out okay for them. but. You see this Solly now is now jumping the demo and these two scouts are completely isolated from them. And I know that this, these guys play a setup where they um, they make a call like left or right on the mids. So I'm not sure if Raiders just stay too long on the left so the medics felt like obligated to go over to him. But really like this setup would be okay if this one of this scout, like maybe this scout over here, if he was playing over, like if you just like, if you move these scouts over, so like this one here is on top and then this one here is over here, or if just this one over here is playing further to the right. Or even just if the pocket is like in closer to the bed, it's a bit too much, too much spread out at the moment. So you see how much distraction that one soldier is causing now, because th there was no one to kill him fast. So that was really the only problem they had on this mid. Other than that, the setup was a lot, lot better than it was yesterday. Like they might even still win this mid, because uh, like they still have their heels up. If they're all just playing tight on heels now, they can actually take this. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this position they're taking up. Like this area over here is much better. Because you get a lot better sight, like on the point, there's high ground all around you, you don't really have good vision, they're a bit split up, but that scout shouldn't really be chasing these frags, like it doesn't really matter now. Those kills are kind of pointless. All they really want is um, to stay everyone alive now, get the point, wait for numbers and push with Uber. So they're finding a kill, that's cool. So now they have a pick to work with, and they just got to push. Uh, looks like they're going to opt to go PC, it's a good choice. Um, just gonna pause it right here and just say like what I think about this push. Um, basically, you should kind of expect to get forced when you come out of PC. But so it's kind of important that you kind of go swiftly and don't spend too long kind of shitting about. Because if you spend ages messing around, like trying not to get forced, you give the team loads of the enemy team loads of time to set up, which isn't really great. Um, so I'd, much, I'd like to see them now kind of just pick a door, like maybe they can check Sticky's top and then if the Sticky's top go lower. But I want to see them kind of do this quite swiftly. So they're going lower, only a scout, like I'd like to see someone else closer to this. Like if that soldier was on that Uber, they would crush them right now. If that soldier had just been further forward, they would absolutely crush them. But something's gone drastically wrong somewhere, they've lost two. And now they really need to just come back. But like these guys are chasing way too hard. As soon as those two guys died, I didn't see where they died. But as soon as they go down, this push was a mess and a fail. And the best thing they could have done was escape, and now they're going to get wiped. And they didn't really deserve to get wiped, because their play, their play up to that point didn't really justify the wipe. What's my favourite anime? The only anime I've ever actually watched all the way through. Because I'm not really a very big anime guy. When I was younger, I watched Trigun. And at the time, I thought that was really, really good, actually. It's kind of weird that I never actually watched any more anime, because I actually really enjoyed watching that. When I was like 15 or something. I never really got into anime properly, though. I just watched a couple of things. That was the only one I ever watched, like, all the way through. Maybe I should try anime, you know? Maybe I'm actually an anime fan. So, less about anime, more about video games. They force this Uber. 
Yesterday I saw them get wiped a lot in this situation. I don't know if they had anyone spotting PC, but they came choked, so it didn't really matter. This scout's now in trying to get the pick on the medic, which is not really a great decision. They already got the force and uber advantage. Like a kill on the med would have been nice, but it wouldn't really have changed their circumstance that much. Like they would still be pushing off last soon with an advantage. Um, so yeah, we're going to see how they push out of this now. Gold skis. Uh, what do I mean? Oh, right. Okay, so they're pushing low with a lot of guys. I feel like they're leaving top a little bit open. I would like to see an extra guy. You see this soldier now could go behind. I would like to see one guy just cover that top route. I didn't really see what happened on the right side. Um... But they're actually finding frags, like the, the Uber's all, almost up, so now they probably want to, they really need time on the point. I don't know where that scout went, but he really should have come back and capped. Because Bobmus already went down, so this scout has made a big mistake here, exceed. He should be capping a lot, lot earlier than that, because they're going to get all these forward spawns now. They had no right to get those two forward spawns with the scout and demo. And uh, these guys are taking a huge risk by playing this close now with the forward spawns, like, and the Uber in play. They made a huge mistake playing there. Like, maybe, like, I'll just pause it. If that scout, Exceed, had gone straight on the point, and they'd got cap time and denied the demo and scout a spawn, they maybe could have then played further forward, gone through the choke, and tried to look for, like, a force on the enemy team, whether that means just, like, baiting them into a bad uber, or actually sending one guy aggro. Like, that kind of depends on the situation they meet when they go through choke, but considering how long it took them to cap, and the fact that forward spawns came in, they didn't have any, uh, any right to really go for that play. They really should have just set up defensively on second. Um... So the medic goes down. Uber Vine is still in the hands of Blue. And everyone's kind of everywhere at the moment. Uh, they could coordinate something here. Because, I mean, Blue team aren't very well organized either. But what I don't want to see is just things like that. Random guys doing random things and getting picked off alone. Luckily, they only lose one. Citro is going to get spawned. And they're going to be able to set up a defense on last. Uh, Blue team have actually built this horribly. They've only got themselves like a 15... Like a 20% advantage, which is really, really kiteable. Like if Bombers is, they really want, to, they should take a heavy probably. Like heavy is just like the standard on last. And I talked to these guys about a way to hold last for even Ubers, but I'm, I'm hoping they don't misinterpret what I said yesterday and, and play that situation, play the same way with, uh, with disadvantage because they're going to get fucked if they play that way. Like what I described to them basically was they were way too stacked up on the right side with even Ubers. I didn't actually see them do any uh, disadvantage pushes. No, disadvantage holds rather. So I didn't really talk to them too extensively about that. But the problem they had yesterday was they were all stacked around here with their entire combo with even Ubers. So they left this entire side open and they gave lobby control completely to the enemy team. But you shouldn't hold like that with even Ubers. You should hold back like your medic on balcony or in this general area with the ability to rotate through here. A heavy getting buffed. Demo man maybe with stickies on point playing from spawn. That's the kind of shit I would like to see. I don't think blue team have timed this very well. Like they're not setting up to push. They probably were conscious of the fact they didn't build very well and didn't want to risk it, so now they're just playing it like it's an even situation. Uh, malfunction? Right now I'm reviewing a demo of an uh, open TF2 team. Obviously it's a TF2 team, I don't know why I said that. Um, they're a team that came second in the Open Rumble Cup, and as part of their prize I, I do a, like a map talk for them. Uh, this is an extension of that, basically, because I thought, like, I don't want to do a half ass job, you know? Uh, like I gave them the map talk, I watched them play, told them like half, for half an hour, I explained what I thought about their mistakes in their gameplay. But I didn't really feel like I'd covered everything, so I told them to play again with what I said in mind, send me a demo, and I'd go through it. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is quite basic, but it's a, it's a lot easier to see when you're like, this seems basic when you're watching it like this and explaining it, but when you're in the heat of the game, keeping track of all of these things, that's where, um, like, making these decisions, understanding the situation, making decisions quickly, that's where it comes in. So they Uber in, they lose their demo. So I didn't actually see how this Uber exchange happened, so I can't really pass too much comment on this. Um, I think what happened was they were holding close, but they weren't controlling... They weren't controlling left lobby particularly well. So they let them in for free quite here. I'm not entirely sure. But either way, they hold it. Which is pleasing. And now they're pushing. They find one frag. Focus that soldier down. If they kill that guy and don't lose any more... Oh, another soldier comes in. Okay. 
I'm just going to waffle it now, but it's not so bad. Like They lose their medic, but they're going to get second. If they can deny that medic forward spawn, then they're going to be okay. They do deny the medic forward spawn, which is really important. Um, okay, they've paused it. That's kind of weird, but it gives me a chance to talk. Yeah, if they hadn't denied that medic forward spawn, it would be really bad for them, because that medic's going to spawn, he's going to give his team heals, and they're going to push second instantly. Uh, and take it for free, essentially. But the fact that medic gets denied spawn means, even though Walkie died a lot later, he's going to be able to get back in the fight at a similar time. Uh, they're going to have roughly even Ubers, like, I don't think anyone's meeting Walkie. Oh yeah, actually they're meeting their medics. Nice, good stuff. So they're just going to have an even Uber situation here now, which is which is fine, really. Considering they were having an even, even Uber trade on last a moment ago, they've retaken second, so... Could have gone better if they kept the medic alive, you know, it would have been a real momentum. They could have pushed, like, taken mid, for sure, maybe even second off the back of the same momentum, but... Yeah, so right now, yep, I want to make sure they're always watching PC, basically, with one guy. One, two, three, four, five. So Raider has five stickies up at the moment. I said to him yesterday I would like to see him keep some stickies on this door. And this becomes all the more important right now because they have a sniper. So basically all the time he should have stickies on probably this door. This one, I don't know, not so much. But because like the sniper silent doesn't work as well from right side, you know? Like, you get more warning as long as your medic isn't standing like here. Then you're okay. But if you keep stickies there, it's at least denying that sniper. So trades happen. They're two down. They're going to use late. Oh no, Walkie, did he drop or did he just not quite get it yet? I'm not sure. Okay, so that was just, that was unlucky basically. Either he dropped or he didn't quite have Uber, he had like 90%. I'm going to look at my stream actually. Okay, so it hasn't happened yet on my stream, but they're 65% for red and 90 for blue. So they didn't build properly essentially. The error there was just simply not building correctly. So now they're going to hold last with disadvantage again. They're pushing, blue team's pushing. I don't really agree with this push. They're going to see that heavy and back out. Sensible stuff. Going to save their uber advantage. Well played by blue, to be fair. Uh, they looked to see if they could get in on the numbers. <coughs> Didn't have quite track of the spawn numbers. Like a prem team would probably not even attempt that because they just have one guy on their team keeping really good track of the spawn waves. But you know, they kind of saw if they could get in before the spawns came, realized the spawns were in and went back. So that's good. Okay, again though, these guys, I think they've misinterpreted like what I'm saying. So I don't want to see you like I didn't mean for you to go for you guys to play like this with uh, disadvantage. The description I gave of holding like this was for e even ubers. With disadvantage, I want to see you more with your medic like playing back with the heavy still. The heavy's a really good choice. Demo with stickies on the point, playing probably playing around here so that he can put like pipe spam on the doors, the main doors. Roma on the left, like this position for the Roma is okay because he can just jump back as soon as he sees them, like getting some sight and lobby and some information. But again, blue team's actually conceding their uber advantage, so they're not actually getting punished for this, which is fortunate, but if they were pushing, they'd have a really, really difficult time holding it. And I'm not sure if it's just... if they actually... I don't know. We'll see. Citra's gonna get caught out. <coughs> just lingering a bit too long, and they'd already had a scout down. So when you have a player down, it's kind of important you don't lose one more. I would probably recommend giving up lobby control entirely if you're already one down. Um, this uber might go okay if they can clean that guy behind, which they should. It's a demo, he's completely alone. I don't recommend that play. Actually gets a trade. So this is kind of dodgy. Raider has to stay alive now. It's really important he doesn't get picked early. They're kind of a bit too scared. I would like to see them play like a bit further back. They don't have the numbers to control all the doors, so they can't really play close. So like, yeah, this position's a little bit better now. And Raider's just getting caught out. Oh my god, he survives. Fucking hell, that was so lucky. Also skillful. Combination of the two, I guess. Uh, right now, I think I'm using DX. I think I'm using 81 at the moment. I used to use uh, 995, but since this skin update, I really don't like DX9 anymore because the skins are just garbage, basically. We've got two frags. There's a new rub for the other team, though, so they have to cap this fast, basically. Uh, yeah, that's fair enough. I was going to say, Boots have had the option to contest, but again, oh, they're letting us hold it in for free from PC. So it's super important, like, when you're capping this point, everyone's just looking at choke, basically, I guess. Like, you don't necessarily have to commit someone to PC, but the guy's capping, like, one guy capping has to be spotting, like, PC all the time. So, like, in this kind of position, you're covered from choke, and you can see everything. They just get fucked, basically, in virtue of not watching PC. Everyone's just on the point looking forward. I mean, if you have a guy spare, like, if it's really comfortable, you could put someone even deeper in PC to completely control it and not let that guy even get in for an attempt. But sometimes you're going to be like, I'm not even watching this last, they're just going to get fucked. And if they don't get fucked, it's just the other team failing, so I don't need to watch. But yeah, if... 
Like in an ideal world, you have like a lot of numbers. You have a player spare to start going here. Maybe he can even push up and get a little bit of information. But ideally, he's just going to control PC so that soldier can never even attempt to bomb. But if you're down numbers, you might not have a guy spare to do that. You might need to stack or something like that. So if you're not having a guy like actually in PC, you still have to have someone watching it all the time. But the mids, the mids is really what I want to see f about this team, because that was their real problem yesterday. So I'm going to watch this one in slow motion when they get here. Raider's not hitting his rollout. And he just, you see that? Like, he wasn't going to go sewers, but he remembered yesterday I recommended if you fail the fast rollout, to just go sewers. And my bind's not working, so put it in slow-mo. That's gay. Okay. Uh, actually, it should already be in console. Oh, no, I'm pressing the wrong bind. Ruffle. Okay. Okay, so this sub's a bit more goofy. These scouts are kind of played it a bit too aggressive on top. Like the fact that they're most slow means they have to be more careful on top. That's something to be something to be mindful of when Raider's not hitting his rollout and going sewers. I'm actually gonna watch this mid again because I kinda missed a lot of important things I think. What does PC mean? PC is the name of an area. It's the area I was looking at. Oh my game crashed. Cool. That hasn't happened to me for a while, crashing when tick skipping. Yeah PC is an area on the map. It has I think Americans call it IT. Um, but in Europe we call it PC. Um, when I get back in game I'll show you the area just in case you uh, you weren't 100% sure which one I meant. For my game of a fucking launches anyway. If my game ever launches. If my game ever launches. If my game ever launches. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Yes! Cool. So we're on, we're on like 49,000. I'll do Q mode just to be sure it's not going to crash. Hey, Kato, can you show chicken? No, I can't actually because it's night time and chickens sleep at night time. So I can't show my chicken, no. Because chickens actually sleep. They kind of just KO at night time. They don't even like have the ability to remain conscious if they want. They have like no autonomy of that situation. They just KO. So if they like forget to go to their hen house for the night, they're just they're just doomed. I'm gonna change. Oh, I don't have my mind. Oh fuck's sake! I'm actually gonna make that even slower actually, because I didn't really like how it wasn't slow enough. I'm fucking it up. Run to mid. Run to mid, boys. Okay, so since I have the opportunity to actually talk about this now, just because I goofed up. So yesterday, Raider is a demo that can do the fast rollout very well. He hits it 90% of the time. Um, and I'm a big advocate of that rollout, actually. A lot of people say it's dumb and useless because you just get fucked by the fast soldier, but you actually don't if you play the situation correctly. And you can actually turn that fast soldier into a disadvantage of his team, but... That doesn't matter, but the point is, I told him, he asked me what should he do if he fails the rollout, basically. And I said the best thing to do is go sewers, because you're really weak. If you fail the rollout, you see his health right now. If I move this thing out of the way. So he's on 50, basically, because he fucked the rollout. Normally he'd be pretty much full, because he'd already be on the pack. Uh, so I told him the best thing to do was to go sewers. Uh, I, told him, I, I main demo. Uh, Meek. C CSK Meek? Susk Meek? I main demo Meek in TF2. I play at a Prem level here in Europe. Um, yeah, I told him to go sewers basically if he's messing up the rollout. But something I didn't explain to them at the time, so Bob must exceed. If Raider is failing his rollout, you have to be really careful because it means you don't have the same demo presence on mid that you're used to. Because what's going to happen now is these scouts are going to both go top, or at least one's going to go top, and they're going to get fucked. Because this demo just has unlimited room. Like, it doesn't really matter so much that Raider's slow. Because if you see, like, the time he arrives on the mid is going to be roughly the same time his combo arrives. So you see these, these scouts, both scouts are just playing top. So actually, they're going to put three guys in the same place on top. They're a little bit too stacked up here. Like, this timing is not great. So, that one scout's weak. He now has to split and go for the pack, which is already sticky. So is he actually going to die? He should really be dead. He didn't even take the pack. He's alive. Okay, that's a bit weird. But something else I spotted there was Citro. 
I don't really recommend jumping top with that timing. The only I think if you're going to go top as a roamer, it should be something you do very early in the mid. So if you're nailing the fast roller, you can land on top and play top. But the time when your scouts are going top, that's kind of more the time when um like you shouldn't be jumping top basically after your scouts are already there, unless there's like yeah, like I th I'd say that's more of a thing a pocket should do with uh, like as a roamer, you should really be doing something more distracting like turning people around and making them look in a different direction to the rest of your players if you're just kind of jumping and stacking up with the rest of your team then they can do damage to you just by default in virtue of focusing the scouts because th that demo wants to focus the scouts your your job is more to stop that demo focusing the scouts by making him either just straight up killing him or in a more high level it's less likely you'll kill the demo and more likely you'll distract him or at least uh, like slow down the enemy team's scouts you know Um, so yeah, if you if you hit the fast rollout and get there before the scouts, you can play top, but otherwise I'd recommend playing the floor until you see an opening to bomb or jump behind. So now this is a kind of a bad situation. There, there should be a scout closer to the medic here. Like, one scout should really be just like on that medic's nuts the whole mid. See, the soldier's getting a free bomb on him now. Actually, he's going for the demo. It doesn't really matter though. The point is the scout should be in that unit, kind of. Again, they might actually end up winning this mid. I'm not sure actually, this scout's kind of alone. Yeah, they're all split, now they're all just split basically. They didn't get their setup right, so now all the fights basically have become uh, really difficult. And they're getting split up bit by bit. Um, like that's, a, that's kind of an issue of its own, but in this case, the way you all split up is just a symptom of... I can actually put this back on normal speed. It's a symptom of the bad... Well, not the bad, but the problems you had with your setup at the start of the mid. <gasps> the Surf of Dreams! Look at that guy go! Oh my god, though. It's so undeserved. Oh, so unlucky for Walkie. That was the Surf of fucking Dreams. I, I didn't quite make the finals of Ice Series. We were in the lower bracket finals and the consolation final, or consolidation final rather, not consolation. Which was the real finals, wasn't it, boys? In terms of. No, nah, it wasn't the real finals, but it was the best game on Sunday, at least. I could take that away from it. Okay, so both men went down. It's again going to be as even a situation. These guys were way overextended. Like, I wouldn't recommend Citroën takes them 1v1 now, but they were kind of way ahead of their team and taking a big risk. Wow. Okay, so now they're down 1. There's full presence for Blue on this point. I would say, where's the demo? Okay, there's a demo. I was going to say, yeah, there's not really an opportunity to contest now. If Citro had stayed alive, they actually would have had advantage of numbers here because one of those scouts wasn't there. In fact, both of those scouts weren't there. So if Citro had just stayed alive a bit longer, they had the opportunity to contest that and probably actually, like, really do damage to blue team if they cho chose to contest. But Citro was just uh, not quite not quite in the right position, basically. He should have played passive, basically, made sure he stayed alive. Reason gone now. Um, we're not gone though. We're going to have a very different roster next season, but there should still be a team. Uh, like I think whether we're called Reason and stay with the Reason Org will be results dependent, but I'm pretty confident we'll be good enough to stay with Reason. It's going to be me, Happy, and Captain with three newcomers. What's your problem? Do you want to go out? Okay. I'm just going to move the camera because I don't want to tab out. It'll break my demo. Pointing the camera at the wall gang because Alex, my girlfriend, needs to take a trip out of the room. Yeah, the thing about Nerd Rage is they play a style. It's very, very kind of like what well, they played. They're gone now. They played a style that was very all or nothing. Um, like they play like if their DM is on, and they're connecting like if they're basically able to like connect all their shots the way they expect. They can really like really give teams a hard time. What you saw on the Saturday when they beat Froyo was some players mainly like Zebasai Tech. Stark just going crazy and achieving that entirely. Um, but yeah, then you kind of see the opposite on the Sunday. When it's not working, they don't really have a plan B. Like, their plan B is Flippy Sniper. Like, it's aggressive, hit our shots and I'll DM them. That not working, Flippy goes Sniper. That not working, fucked basically. But when it works, it's fucking sick. And it's probably the most impressive TF2 you'll see, like, but it doesn't work all the time. Okay, so I had to pause and I kind of got out of sync with myself for this. Raider's playing this fight quite well. Like, he's playing a good positional game, keeping control of the point. 
And yeah, because of that, basically, this team doesn't know what to do because he's keeping so much control of the point. Like, everyone's playing quite defensive, not giving up their lives cheaply. And Raider's doing a good job of controlling the point, so that was a nice hold. I mean, what you want to see there, basically, is a bit more team play from Blue. But, yeah, Red did everything they had to. Yeah, I mean, their plan B works an awful lot of the time, but... Like most teams, will just they'll be a little bit more like adaptive and reactive. Fly, fly, annoying. Okay, so what's going on? Just gonna get, just gonna slow it down while I get my bearings. No, nope, my bind doesn't work. Where's my fucking bind gone? Oh, I'm busting the wrong one again. I am a god. I'm sure I've bound this wrong. I used to have it on the other key, and I've just missed it, mixed it up. Okay, so this has got fucked. I don't really know how this got fucked. I was kind of not paying attention for a few minutes, for a few moments rather. But the current situation, where is their team? One, two, three. Oh, they're only four up. That guy's dead already. I was going to say, where did that scout go? So they're just fucked now, basically. No need to watch this. They're going to get wiped, basically. Oh my god, Walkie! No! He almost... That's twice now. Walkie's almost had, like, the surf of his dreams and then dies. Yeah, so the spawn wave... Nah, the spawn wave's not going to do it. Let's get past this and get to the next round. What? How did they fucking hold that? They had no right to hold that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, boys. If you're watching this demo review and you're looking forward to seeing that moment, I'm sorry that I just skipped past it. But <laughs> you had no right to hold that. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. You held it. Good job. <laughs> Good job, boys. <laughs> All right. So side advantage. Citra's down. Five v five. We're holding the point. There's going to be another hold. Oh, getting a headache. I need to hydrate, I think. Go casino. We're actually going to push. Okay, so they have a slight advantage. This is a ballsy play. They have to focus the medic, though. They're getting fucked on the flank. Oh, yeah, two sex, mate. Go, 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 go. Run for your life. Run for your life. Okay, and she's through. So yeah, they had to focus the medic here if they're going to push like this. PC is actually a really good choice if that's the play they're making. Um, it looked to me like Blue got a bit caught out by it, but... They're not getting the medic and their flank just got penetrated. You see there's two guys behind right now in the back cap, so now that that back cap's happening... <laughs> and they're not getting the medic. Like, for sure they're not getting that medic, he even has Uber already. As soon as that call came from Choke, that the flank had been like... the uh, Bob must died to trash, and Bob must would have probably called that two guys went behind. As soon as that happens, and you, that Uber was not successful, or well, even if that Uber was, even if they killed the mech, they should still go back. But especially considering that the Uber was unsuccessful, they have to go back. They have to go back instantly. They're not going back anywhere near quick enough, and they're probably going to lose this round because of it. So now they go back. Raider's going to make it. His mech's dead. Like best case scenario now is they can block this cap or get a f get a few frags as they fall out, but they're not gonna. It's not gonna happen. It's the end of the round. I'm not gonna fast forward because last time I did that, some miracle happened. But I really can't see a way in which they hold this. Yeah, it's over. So yeah, mistake there was getting flanked. Basically lost. Like not even a mistake. They got flanked. They lost the fight on choke. The flank. Their flank of blue took an aggressive fight and won it. The mistake was not going back quick enough. As soon as that happened, as soon as that call came in, they should go back. So you see, Ray oh god, wrong mind. So Raider's hitting his rollout. Is Vec hitting a fast rollout as well? Because he seems quite fast to me. Okay, so Citra's going deep actually. He's going deep, boys. I don't know what that rocket was. Citra didn't make it happen. So now this is a tough mid. I would like to see Citra just play a positional game there, land on top, and spam this, spam the demo back. Uh, they're playing aggro like that. I don't really know if they have a chance here now. I'm not really sure if there's an effective play you can make when you lose one that early for nothing. Like, if you put significant damage out, maybe there's something you can salvage, but at that point, I'd probably say they should play a lot more defensively. Like, just start backing. If if blue team f makes a mistake and throws someone at you and you get a frag, then maybe you can decide, okay, we stay we stay in now. Um, but they're, they're actually turning this around, but this is, this is a mistake on blue team's part. I wouldn't recommend taking this approach, like staying in this committed. Like, blue team was basically a couple of guys have over... Oh my god, Raider. He's crapping on them, but still. 
He's only able to crap on them because blue team have made mistakes and overextended. And still they're actually overextending, like with random guys jumping in, jumping in. Like, maybe that soldier goes for a play and that soldier leaves with his medic. But this is a fucking clusterfuck now, basically, for blue team. Be really surprised Walkie's gonna surf that like a champ. Look at him go. Wait, no, he didn't. Didn't surf it like anything. He's gonna die. Walkie, no! Okay, that medic shouldn't, probably shouldn't have died. But, the fact they won that mid is just kind of dumb. It's a big mistake by Blue. If you lose your Roma that early and he doesn't get anything done, you should take a more defensive position and, ho and hope they overextend. But your expectation should be that they're going to push you out of the mid as a team and you're not going to get anything and you just want to keep five guys alive but you have a separate defense on two. So both minutes go down. Nothing's going to happen for a while. Well, nothing that matters to me because it's just going to be individual hero plays that I can't really comment on. Uh... Both men staying uber... Okay, so they got a crits. Okay. Interesting. Actually, not that interesting. We talked about crits yesterday. Um, I'm going to watch Raiders pop, actually, because I want to see, like, see how he plays this crits. Because, obviously, I'm a demo main, so I can give more specific advice to Raider than I can anyone else. So he's going in. I think he's got the call where they are. The medic's kind of seen it coming and gone away. I think he's got he's gone a little bit too deep with this now. And they capped the point. Okay, that's a mistake by blue team. Just going to pause it a little bit and say what I think about the crits. Um, the first thing I noticed with that crits was the medic escaped, but the demo split left. You see they split, medic got safe, demo didn't get safe. What I would have recommended is playing that a bit more passive, not going quite so deep, and just making sure that demo goes down. The moment that medic disappears into panic room, uh, it's a, it's a, not, a, it's not a fail crits, but it's a very difficult situation because you know they already have Uber. So what you then want to do is like prioritize not dying, because this kind of tends to happen when you crits into the enemy team. If they're not expecting it, they kind of shit themselves when they hear the crits. Either they hear the crits or their team calls that crits is happening, and they kind of shit themselves and then they lose kind of coordination. So if you play defensive and just like play from the choke, spam like long range stickies, try and snipe people. Chances are that some one or two guys is going to come give their give them give themselves to you basically, and then you can actually do something with those picks. And the fact that demo completely like, that demo didn't even oh wait yeah he did there's someone else. The fact that demo split left means he's completely isolated, and you should just basically go for the frag on him. Don't even try and spam stickies there. Just play from this position like by that pillar. I wouldn't recommend going any further forward than hmm. I'm not sure. I wouldn't really recommend going any further forward than the bottom of this ramp, and even that is a push. I wouldn't. That's like stretching it a bit, that's pushing the boundaries. Like when the crits doesn't go well right at the start, like the first crit sticky is kind of everything. But yeah, you got on the point. That's like it's a good it's a good reaction to get boys on the point. Oops. So again, Raider nailing it. Okay, so the other demo, okay, the other demo's not going fast, but he's just hitting the regular rollout quite well. So Raider, at this point, I wouldn't recommend generally playing on the point, but by by now, he's kind of recognised that their Roma's not coming for him fast. So he's kind of able to do this. Um, I'm guessing he didn't realise that the demo went left, because these stickies are kind of ineffective. The demo's setting up over here, kind of tells him... Uh, oh, he's hitting a nice pipe for me. It kind of tells him that they're going to set up on that side of the map, so these stickies should probably mostly just be avoided. Um, again, they're putting two scouts on top all the time, which is not necessarily bad. In fact, it's hard, actually, that's actually pretty decent. It's probably fine. They have to make sure they spread out a little bit. But again, Citro is dying really early. I'm not sure how that happened. But I mean, this time he died early, but there's at least damage on the field this time. You see, like, Blue already have two red players. So in theory, this is, like, still a winnable mid for them. Yeah, but now both their scouts are getting hurt. Now this is really bad for them. At this point, they should start considering leaving. I mean, they probably don't have this information. They're not gonna like not everyone's gonna know that both their scouts are super weak. But now, like this is just kind of fucked. They're not anywhere close to finding frags. They should have left about. Mm, they should have left about five seconds ago. Like, the scouts getting weak was when it was completely fucked. Like if Cit Citro shouldn't die that early, I don't actually know why he died. I'm gonna go back and actually see like why did he die. Because I'm going to watch Citro's pov on this mid. Wait, aren't you in reason? Yes, dude, I'm in reason. I'm in reason. Reason gaming. I'm watching uh, uh, another team's demo at the moment. I'm trying to help them out, improving their gameplay. Okay, so we're going to watch Citro on this mid. 
and see what he's doing, because I don't think he's... Wait, what? We're at the start of the demo. How the fuck have we ended up here? Try again. <laughs> okay, now we're going to try and watch Citro. Are we, we're at the start of the demo. What the fuck is going on? Let's try one more time. Oh, okay. Found the problem, boys. Oh, thanks, yeah. We're hoping to stay together. I really hope we do. Okay, so we're looking for Citra on this mid. I'm not a Roma main. I've never played Roma at a high level. So I actually, I don't know, like, the more kind of nuanced things about roaming. But I know what I like the enemy team Roma to do. Like, what I, when I see a Roma do something, like, I know it's a mistake. And I know what I want my Romas to do. So, yeah. He fucked the first jump. So the fact he fucked the first... Okay, okay, actually, this isn't so bad. Like, he didn't get the frag, but he, the demo was so far forward and so alone that he had every right to go for that frag, actually. So that's actually not... That's just kind of the DM thing. He had every right to go for that demo kill. He was so far out, so alone, and just didn't quite connect, like, enough damage. So that was basically just unlucky. Like... The only thing I could say about that approach from from Citro was hit your shots, bro. But what use is that, basically? That's useless information. So, Orki died. So last told, I want to see a heavy. I want to see stickies on the point. Like we saw when... Uh, okay, Raiders overextended. Yeah, you got to be really careful. Like, you get surprised from lower right. Like, the best way to play, I think, from as a, as a demo is around the spawn area. So this is, like, the line, dude. Like, right here. The map creator was nice enough to draw a fucking line for demos here to let them know where they should stand. Don't stand further forward than this line. I mean, you can stand here. I guess it's okay. You can stand here as long as you're getting cools. Like, you hear the combos in lobby, you back up to this line. You spam, 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 back up, back up, back up. Anyway. Oh shit, missing the mid. Okay, so it's pretty much the same stuff we're seeing as before. Citro fast on the point. Has to be careful he's not using too many stickies early because it can mean he has not enough later in the fight. Oh, I like the way he's like he's controlling the start of these mids really well. That scout is so fucking lucky to only be a hun to have a hundred health left now. He could have got destroyed. Okay, so at this point, I, I was gonna say I'd like to see Citra drop down and get ready to do uh, a bomb of some description. So this sword is going for free. This is really okay. This is a huge mistake. Like I explained to them yesterday. From the match was very good demo games. Thanks, mate. I think I played pretty well at I-55 overall. But yeah, yesterday I explained to them that having scouts on high ground is really important. But there's a reason for that. It's the easiest way to deny soldiers. And they just let the soldier in for free, basically. I think he came he came from PC. I don't I don't think that I know he came from PC. So I'm guessing they just got surprised by him. But it basically meant they weren't playing in the right position basically on top because they didn't have they didn't have enough vision so now this soldier is completely isolated gets the medic no one really looking after the medic properly there not not enough awareness but essentially they just let that soldier in for PC from for free like I'm just gonna go see if I can like work out I kind of described to them yesterday that a good a good place for scouts to play on the high ground is around here because not only can you see everything you see left you see right and you see top it's very hard to spam you. So if they had one scout kind of hanging a bit further back, rather than like, rather than like one here tunneling, vis tunnel visioning over here, and then one here tunnel visioning again, if you have just one at the back, not committing themselves to any target and just kind of, I, I explained to them a system of like hopping back and forward. It doesn't really work so slow. So you jump back and forward, back and forward, constantly looking around. He could deny that soldier. He would see him and deny him. Um, why does she keep coughing? I don't know why she keeps coughing, dude. Hey Clockwork, thanks for the compliment. It pleases me to know that you consider me a demo reviewer. My hand's starting to hurt. I think I've overdone it today. Rip the dream. Uh, in any case... Yeah, I'm watching in the wrong perspective. Where are we at? So they're down Uber, like they're getting the point, I don't really know what happened in the last few minutes, they're getting the point. Okay, so now, this is a situation I was talking about yesterday. 
where they got fucked. And I said the problem was basically that no one was spotting PC. So right now this scout is spotting... Okay, there's a mistake here. Okay, for a start, this raid is overextended completely. I don't know what he's doing now. It's a mistake. Okay, yesterday I stressed the importance of them that they have sight on PC. However, like, well, I'm kind of set up now. Ah, oh, just fucked it. Okay. Um, okay, the, the important situation, the, the important things here have kind of already been fucked up. Like, the medic got out, that's fine. But, Raider's gonna die. That scout on PC is probably gonna die. He might be able to trade. He might get that scout, but then his team's gonna come and uh, help kill him, basically. So they've gone three down. So he does get that frag, so that's, that's good enough. But... Okay, actually, let me let me put this another way. It I guess it's it's okay to play there, here in theory maybe, if you're confident you're gonna win a one v one basically, and then you can flank. Like if no one else dies, then maybe you can play the situation like this and win a one v one and flank, play it risky like this, as long as no one else in your team is dying. But if you just like just to watch PC to watch it passively, like I kind of described yesterday, where I am right now, it's absolutely fine. Like you get the full sight, you can see the combo if they're coming here, and Someone else is going to tell you they're coming choke, and as a scout you can immediately just run through there, and you're, and you're alive, you're safe, you get the vision everywhere. So, the fact that Citro, not Citro, sorry, the fact that Exceed won, won his 1v1 there, actually means it's like not a bad play from him. The problem was that they lost two, so he couldn't do any anything basically. And they didn't cap. Now they're capping. And yeah, I would have recommended actually Exceed stay behind there. Like, you saw him try and escape through here. Like, once he got that kill, like, if he saw no one was capping, I, w I would have just stayed in PC until someone started capping that. And then tried to block the point. But I mean, that's neither here nor there, really. I'm not really. I'm not a scout main. I don't really educate. Am I the only person? Am I the online person here? I don't think so, man. I don't know. Sometimes chat goes quiet. Other days it's really active when people are talking a lot, but some days it just goes quite quiet. Maybe it's. I'm not very entertaining, but you're all here, so anyway, back onto the mid fight, boys. So demo again, playing really far left. Citro is not hitting his rollout perfectly. Like these scouts kind of make me nervous because they're often occupying the same space. So if that demo shoots stickies at them, they're going to have trouble. But they are controlling like they, this team is controlling high ground a lot better now. I feel like their play, they, their mids have improved from yesterday, and Citro is doing a good jump actually. Like, the only problem is, the only problem I can see is now they kind of need to go forward. Like they clean that guy up, and now they actually need to support Citro, who's still distracting. You see, he has two guys' attention. He's dead now, but now if they just go forward, they can actually win this mid, and it will be the best mid I've seen from them if they can convert this. Okay, so they're actually going to win this. Now, the, the key is they don't overextend. This scout's going to take a 1v1. So as long as he doesn't commit deep... Okay, that's good. I was going to say, if that scout dropped down to face him, it was a big mistake. But he was controlling him. He was in a position where he could back up to the health kit and his medic at any time, basically. Uh, this is the best mid I've seen them play by a mile. This is a really good mid from them, actually. They did almost everything perfectly. Like, yeah, that's a really good mid, basically. A really good mid. Wow, suddenly the chat comes alive. Have you this you're the scout of my dreams, bro? And now they let a fucking soldier on their medic! What are they doing? Where are you going, boys? You had it! They're gonna lose! <laughs> what a throw. Okay, up till that point where everyone just fucked off to chase frags and left Walkie alone. It was a really good mid. But at that point, it became a really shit mid, and a really shit play. So, yeah. Do that first bit again, and do that, that last bit never again. That's my advice. That's my big advice, basically. So again, we're in the familiar situation of them being down on Uber. On second. Like, this team chases way too- this is what I'm noticing watching this demo a lot more than I noticed yesterday. You're chasing way too much, way too hard all the time. It's like, focus the objectives, boys. 
If you win the cap, get that fucking cap. There's very specific situations you want to chase hard and you're not playing it right at the moment. So for now I'd recommend just don't chase ever. Like, never chasing is much better than always chasing. And if, if you can't recognize the situations where you should chase and where you shouldn't, it's better just to never chase, basically. Reason is over. Happy's talking shit. What are you on about? Is it demo Yak? No, there's a guy called Vec on the other team. So they're holding last. I'm getting a bit tired now, so I'm kind of losing my attention. But I think I, I think I've kind of seen most of the situations I'm going to see in this demo now. I'm going to watch it to the end, but I think for the most part I've kind of seen. I'm just kind of seeing the same mistakes that I've seen before. Oh, the crits is in, boys. We forgot about the crits, but they don't really get anything with it. FT survives. They get the medic. I don't know what the hell Cancerino was doing there. It's a big mistake. And they're actually cleaning, cleaning up this fight. Just want to see how they're taking this approach. Soldier comes in from behind. No, they survive. Okay, well played. Exceed over extending, but maybe he thought he's. I didn't really see what he did. Not going to judge it. Okay, so it's 3v3. They have the advantage of heals. Their med's weak. Just They can just go through sewers here, get him a kit, and then go forward. Uh, the sniper's there. Someone needs to pressure the sniper. And now they, it's really important they don't chase now because they actually don't have numbers anymore because of the spawn wave. See, they're still waiting on these two guys, whereas all of those blue guys are there already. So. It's vitally important they don't chase, they just control the chokes, get the cap. And they actually have a lot of time to play with here, so they can actually cap this and then do a push for advantage. I think they favour PC for this one. So last time the mistake they made was they got fucked on the flank when they made this push, and they only Uber to scout through when a soldier really should be involved in that. So they're going to go lower, and they're going to actually ca catch out for exit. I wouldn't recommend chasing left, I would chase right here every time. And let me tell you why. You have a flank. If you chase to the right, and they... Okay, so basically, I can see why you chase left. You see them to the left of the pillar, and you think if you go right, you're not. If you go left, rather, you're going to catch them faster. But if you go left, they can just run this way. But if you go right, they can only run this way, and that's where your flank's coming from. So I would kind of always chase right here, or just jump the tower and completely trap them out. Either way, maybe it's going better than last time. They should convert two frags, and they should get the cap. But now they need to set up defensively. Oh, okay, that soldier gets in for free. They this is happening an awful lot, the soldiers are kind of seeking in, but oh wow, Vec made a huge fucking mistake. So now they cap and now they go, now they go force. Go and force, like right now. Don't commit your medic, don't commit your demo, just spam, spam, spam. Play the cap, force their uber. Okay, they ubered, now scatter, 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 scatter. The spawn wave's gonna come in and catch you if you're not careful. And they're scouting really nicely, like that one scout's in, it's fine to lose him. Like, they did their job, like someone was gonna have to die for that force pretty much. It's really luck. it's really like... Not very often you're all going to get out, but they play that situation really well. And now they should be a bit more defensive than this, I think, because they just want to play that uber advantage. Like, I would like to see stickies here. This is like the easiest way to, to actually push out and slip a soldier in for the, for the attacking team. I think it's the most important place to sticky. Like, soldiers can control these doors very well, especially this one. Like, he's playing there, you know, he can spam both doors. Soldier on the point, he can spam both. They get all the spam there. So stickies lower, like here, is the most important place. There and lower left, I'd probably recommend four stickies on each. Now they have advantage. So we'll see how they're going to do it. We're going to slow it down. So the important part about pushing, pro about pushing process last with advantage is not to rush it too much. Like if they give you frags, take those frags, but don't try and like win the fight in the uber. Somehow Cancerino is actually getting uber already, so I, I don't think... I, don't, I want to see the logs for this game, because I don't think Red Team are building effectively. I don't think the blue team shouldn't have got uber this like far, like, this early in this fight. And so I think maybe we've made a, they've made a mistake of building again here. I was have you really hurt my feelings lately? I'm not gonna lie. Somehow they're winning it anyway, which is cool. They they deserve an extra round in this game because they didn't they didn't play a four-one game. So one last mid. I oh, can't boys. I want to see that mid again, but without the nonsense you did at the end. Let's have it. So, okay, okay, the blue team's just playing retard mode. So, 
so I don't think this is going to be a room where Blue Team has a sniper and a demo jumping early on mid. But let's see if they do this, do a decent sap anyway. So this time they're playing one scout on high ground, one scout on the left. As long as that demo goes to the left of the rock, from my perspective, then this is a really nice setup on the mid actually. Like their roamer is really late. Like Citro, I don't know if that's an intentional delayed aggro, like a delayed fast rollout, or if uh, if he's just fucking his rollout, fucking his jumps. But if that's like, if that's not an intentional delay, then he needs to work on his rollout a bit more, or just maybe avoid doing the fast rollout so often, because if you're not hitting it properly, you're kind of more of a harm, more of a hindrance than you are a help for your team. But that, that setup, that setup was pretty decent, but this is going to be the end. You just said you found me entertaining.